Okay, so we'll start to get through a few questions. First up, if we go to Wingy Boxing, please. Chris, what's going on, brother? How are you? What's up, man? How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I want to ask you a question. Well, I want to ask you loads of questions, but I've only got a few. How has the boxing public and media been towards you since the beginning of your career up to now? Have you seen a change from the fans and the supporters? Because you're a divisive character, aren't you? Like Marmite, some people would say. Am I divisive? I think that's pretty strong. I mean, I thought I was... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, you know, the beginning of my career... Uh, people weren't sure what to make of me, you know. Um, a lot of people were saying I was in it to make a quick buck and then I was just going to, you know, go on Love Island or whatever, you know, just in and out. But um, once uh, once people started seeing I was serious, you know, I won a lot of fans over. Obviously, I've still got a lot of uh, doubters, a lot of people that, you know, don't believe in what I'm doing and, you know, for whatever reason, um, don't like me but I think over the years you know I've proven myself I've made my own path uh you know I always entertain I always um you know I always put on a show I never quit I never I never coast I'm one of those guys it's always fun to watch me fight so um you know as long as I keep doing that you know I think uh I think boxing is is uh is is better with me in it than with me without it and no, I'm not retiring after this fight. That was an April Fool's joke, just in case anyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you put pressure on yourself when you say other fighters go in there against like Triple G and Canelo and act scared and you uh, are like the opposite of them, you're going to take it to them? Because when that fight happens, a lot of people will be expecting, right, we want to see that. Um, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Is that a sort of pressure that you're going to have to go forward or does it depend oh. in... Of course, any you know, any any making a statement like that, you're 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 putting a lot of pressure on yourself, because if you don't do what you say, um, you become a laughing stock, you become a joke. Yeah. Um, I understand that, and that's one thing I've never been is is a, is a joke or a laughing stock. People, know I'm a very serious guy, so um, you know, people should take what I say seriously. I don't think I've ever said anything in the ring that I've never gone on to go and do or um or try to do so um that is the plan that is the game plan you know i'm not scared of these guys a lot of these guys they they go into these fights and they've already lost the fight's over before they've even got through the ropes um they go in there to survive and you know if you if you know anything about me you know that is you know the last thing that's ever um you know on my mind i'm 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 in there to to devastate and um, that's what fighters like GGG and Alvarez, that's what you have to do to be successful against those guys. You know, they're, they're sharks. They smell, they smell the fear and they will take advantage of it. Um, no one's taking advantage of me. Thank you very much for your time, brother. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, for me. If we go to Andy from Boxing Social next, please. Hi, oh, Chris. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So, um, quite a simple first one. Why Marcus Morrison? Uh, you know, we needed a we needed a comeback fight. We needed a warm up. We needed a, a solid opponent who was going to give me the rounds um, and get me ready for a big fight in the summer. And uh, he was the name that was put forward, and uh, I accepted immediately. You know, it's a ten round fight. I've been out of the ring a long time, and um, I'm looking forward to getting back in there and showing off everything I've been working on over the last year and a half with Roy Jones Jr. Chris, you're a heavy favourite heading into this fight, but with Marcus, what dangers does he possess that you might be wary of that you might have been studying? Listen, he has two hands and two gloves, so he's just as dangerous as any other person that gets in a ring. If you underestimate a man, you come unstuck. That has happened it's happened a lot. You've had, a, you've been having a lot of upsets lately, actually. Um, so, uh, you know, he's a solid guy from what I can see. He's strong and um, I've trained very hard for this fight. This is, this is, um, it's, it's a very important fight for me. I have to win this fight. If I, if, if I, if I, if I put, if I put on a flat performance or if I don't win, that would be devastating. So this is just as big as a world title fight for me. 
in, in my opinion. Chris, just final one from me. With regards to what's next, you mentioned a big fight in the summer. Looking at the likes of the Andrade's, Golovkin's, Charlo's, I mean, obviously, up at Super Midway, you got Canelo, maybe Billy Joe rematch. Who would you like to face next if you could choose? Golovkin is the end goal for this year, 100%. I've wanted to fight that man for a long time, and now we're in a position to where, as long as I do what I'm supposed to do, we can make that fight this year. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great, great fights to be made in the middleweight division. Um, Charlo's a big fight. Um, you know, Royal to Murata, he is the, the, the full WBA champion at the moment, so I'm, I'm number one contender to fight him. Um, anybody with a belt, man, anybody with a belt, anybody with a name, um, you know, I need to be active. These are my prime years, so I want to fight the best. I want to fight the biggest. Uh, and this year is, uh, is where we start that journey. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thanks, Andy. If we go to Joe from Seconds Out for your two questions. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good, good, good. So, as you've just mentioned, you've been very vocal in the past few years about calling out the best in the world, GGG, Canelo, and the other people who Andy's just mentioned. Although you've made a name for yourself, respectively, do you think having your father's name will help you land those fights over, over in America? No. Why is that? Do you not think, you know, having that sort of uh, the memories of your father and then people thinking maybe you, you're sort of just bring them back to the old times? Do you not think that helps you sell the fight? No. Respectively? Okay, fair enough. And uh, memories, nostalgia, names, that doesn't mean shit when uh, you've got a guy in there who's trying to take your head off. If you can't fight, you can't fight. And going into those huge fights, as you just mentioned, GGG is the, the current goal for you. How would you think your styles match up? And why actually is he the goal for the end of the year? He is, Triple G is the number one middleweight in the world in terms of, uh, you know, viewing figures in terms of public. Uh, you know, he's the, he's the, he's the biggest name. Uh, and I know I can beat him. I want to be the biggest name in the middleweight division. I want to be the top dog. To be the top dog, you got to beat the top dog. So, um that fight has to be made. Um, you know, it, it slipped through my fingers a couple of years back and I've always regretted that. So, uh, you know, we have to make it right. All right, thank you. Cheers. Okay, thanks, Joe. If we go to Jonathan Nagio from Pro Boxing Fans, please. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Good, thank you. Um, genuinely interested to understand sort of the dynamic between you and Roy Jones Jr. What would you say you know, is the one thing, the biggest thing you've learned from having him around. And do you, does he ever get in the ring? I mean, you, he's still active a bit in exhibitions. Yeah, Roy, listen, Roy's more than active. He, he's he's in the gym every day. It's unbelievable. Um, training every day, training, you know, himself, training me. Um, you know, boxing is his life. He, he can't stop. He doesn't want to stop, um, you know. And... You know, with Roy being with him over the last year and a half, um, you know, I'm not going to change as a fighter overnight. I'm 31 years old, but what Roy has changed in me significantly is my mindset, um, the way I think about the sport, the way I approach uh, fights and, and sparring sessions. Um, you know, he he's a he's a he's a genius. And I've been learning from that genius for over a year now. And I, and I feel like a lot of his, his creativeness and his, uh, his mastermind has rubbed off on me. So now it's just for me to go into that ring on Saturday and, and show as much of it as I can off. And just lastly, you mentioned at the start, maybe you said from your own admission, people may not have taken you seriously at the start. And there's a lot of pressure on you with your dad's career. Campbell Hatton's also on the bill. What advice would you give to him starting off his career? Um, you know, I've, I've been there and I've done it. I've been, I've walked the path, the exact path that he is now having to walk. It's a tough one. Um, you know, if you don't want it with all your heart, if you don't desperately want to become, you know, a great fighter, then it's... Uh, it's um, it's ruthless. It's 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 a tough path that he's going to walk down. So you know, 
I hope he wanted it. He wants it as much as I wanted it because that's what you need. You need that. You need that uh, ambition and that that grit and that determination to make it because you know you you're gonna get compared to your world champion father from your first fight, from your debut fight, which is you know it's not fair and it's you know it's not right. But um, that's just that's boxing for you. You know you're in the sport. Your father's son. You're there's always going to be comparisons. Um, the the best thing I can say is just be happy within yourself. Um, you know, forget what everybody else says. The critics, the fans, the haters. Don't let anybody gas you up. Don't let anybody put you down. Just be happy in yourself. Do what you do to make yourself the best fighter you can be, and um, and don't try and be anything you're not, because. Uh, you know, you'll get found out. Boxing is a very harsh, it's a very harsh world. It's a very harsh sport. You have to be truthful to yourself. Appreciate that, Chris. All the best for Saturday night. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Jonathan. If we go to Carlos Toro for your question next, please. Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, you mentioned, you know, not wanting a, a flat performance per se in your, in this upcoming fight, but, when it comes to wanting that big summer fight and sort of shaking off that ring rust, given how your your last fight was cut short, do you feel that getting rounds in is a bit of a more a priority this time around? Um, you know, is it a priority? Relentless Lewis always says uh, you don't get paid for overtime, uh, which is true. You know, and so in in that sense, you know, do you want to? Do you want to stay in the in in the path of danger for more for longer than you have to? Um, you know, I guess I'll make that decision on the night. But um, you know, it would be good to get some ring, some some proper rounds in. Um, but if I don't, you know, it is what it is. I I have to get those rounds from sparring and from the training. Um, but I think Marcus is a very solid dude and he's going to be able to um, to go in there and, and make it competitive. So I've got to be on my game 100%. You mentioned how, you know, you were talking about how you sort of let the Gennady Golovkin fight slip for your fingers a couple of years ago. Do you feel now that there is maybe perhaps more urgency on your side to try and get those big fights that you mentioned, whether it be a Charlo or Murata or Andre or a Golovkin? Absolutely. I'm 31 years old. Um, you know, I'm in the prime of my life, but the prime doesn't, it doesn't last forever. You've got to strike when the iron's hot. And um, I need these belts. I want these belts. So now is the time. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, if we go to Davinda Powell from the Boxing Voice, next please. Cheers, Dan. Hi, Chris. You okay? Good. Thank you. Good, good. Um, just looking at um, your the latest fights at middleweight, would you ever consider going back up to, to super middle? Um, and if you were to fight Gennady Golovkin, would you want to fight him at a catchweight, middleweight, super middleweight, or is it something that you, you're not bothered about? No, mid Golovkin is a, a middleweight world champion. Why would I fight him at a catchweight? I won his belt. Um, the only fight that I would move up a weight again for is Canelo. That fight, I would move up a weight for, um, even though I'm not a super middleweight. Um, that's the fight I would move up for. But aside from that, the, you know, there's there's so many there's so many great fights to be had at middleweight. You know, there's there's no need to look at super at the super. I'm I'm not a natural super middleweight. I have to I have to gain weight. I have to eat breakfast the day of the weigh in to make 168 to make 12 stones. So. Um, Middleweight is is where I'm comfortable at. It's my natural weight, and that's where I'm going to stay uh, for the time being. Brilliant. And just very finally as well, Chris, um, did you watch the, the Felix Cash performance on, on Saturday night against Enzo Bentley? No, I didn't. No problem. He won anyway. But listen, look, best of luck for uh, for yourself on Saturday night, and uh, may the best man win. Okay, appreciate that. Thanks, Devinda. If we go to Ames from Boxing News TV for your two. Ames here from Boxing News TV. Pleasure to meet you, Chris. Uh, I know you're a more... I hope you enjoyed the recent movie. So, um, didn't hear what you said. 
I said, I know you're a Mortal Kombat fan, so I hope you enjoyed the uh, recent movie that came out, if you've seen uh, it. Uh, I'm actually, I actually haven't watched it yet, but I'm, oh, I've watched half of it, so don't tell me what happens in it. No worries, no worries. A couple of questions for me. Uh, Chris, there are those in the public boxing public who have been critical of the standard of some of the fighters you fought, this being the case here with Marcus Morrison, most notably Ty and Booth, who believes you're fighting his leftovers, as he says. What's your thoughts on the criticisms about the opponent you picked for this weekend? I didn't pick the opponent. My my promoters picked the opponent. Um, mm -hmm. I agreed. You know, I'm not going to turn down a fight. I haven't, I've been out of the ring for for a long time. Um, you know, anyone who's not happy with it, uh, there's a, there's a, a big red button at the top of your remote. So you can just, you can put your finger on it and it just, it makes the screen go dark. Mm -hmm. And with that said, there's been a lot of talk with you and your career about those big fights, the Canelo's, Triple G's, Charlo's, as has been said, uh, but you haven't been able to land that so far. Why from your perspective has, have those fights not materialized for you? The ones you've been campaigning for, for a number of years now, what, what, what is it from your end? Why, why haven't they happened? Um, there's only one fight that hasn't materialized, and that's Golovkin, you know. Mm -hmm. All the other fights I, that I wanted were made. Um, you know, I would have had, I would have fought Charlo last year. They were lining that fight up. We fought on the same bill uh, at the end of 2019, and then they were going to, they were going to build that fight for early 2020. Um, COVID hit. And, you know, that put a spanner in the works big time. Um, but, you know, boxing's back. So now these fights will happen. All the best, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we've got time for two more before we let Chris leave. So if you go to Brett Redmond for your question, please. Yes, Dan. Hi, Chris. I hope you're well. Good. Thank you. Um, now I'll refer back to 2015. You, you know, you absolutely pummeled Gary Spike O'Sullivan uh, at the O2 Arena and retired him on his stall. And straight away after the fight, the first thing we come out was that we've heard, you know, you, you want to fight Gennady Golovkin. Everybody's scared of him. I want him. What actually was the fall down in that fight not happening? Because I know you guys were in deep negotiation and then Kel Brooks stepped in afterwards. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, there's, there's two sides to that story. You have, you know, the side of, you know, Kel Brooks stepping in and I guess, um taking a lot less money and, and and demands for the fight making the fight easier for eddie to make in england um and then you have an, an, another story which i heard from from eddie Hearn himself in an interview where uh you know the the fight was was signed ready to go and uh at the last minute my dad said um we want one more thing. We want a, a painting or a picture that was up in the, uh, the matchroom office or something like that. And, um, and Barry Hearn said no. And that apparently destroyed the, uh, the negotiations. I, I, that's what Eddie said. I, I've never heard that story until he told it, you know, I don't know how long it got last year. Um, at the end of the day, the fight, it doesn't really matter. The fight didn't happen. And, um, you know, we have to rectify that. We have to, we have to make that fight happen because, you know, in the middleweight division, I don't think there's anybody, you know, I don't think there's anybody that the fans, the boxing fans want more to fight Golovkin than me. They know what I'm going to bring. They know I'm going to go for them. They know I'm not going in there to, to lay down and survive. So, um, yeah, we have to get that fight made this year. Okay, Chris. Great. Thanks very much for that. Good, good luck for Saturday, and I hope you land that fight in the future. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we've got time for one more. Just apologies for anyone who hasn't had a chance to ask yet, but we're on a bit of a tight schedule. Uh, if we go to Donor Corby next, please. Hi, Chris. Uh, great to speak to you. Um, uh, apologies if I'm repeating something here. Uh, I, I joined in a little bit late, but uh, what is the relationship, the dynamic like, uh, when it comes to, to training between your dad and, and, and your, your new coach, Roy Jones? Um, you know, my, my father wasn't around for the year and a half that I was with Roy, so there wasn't a dynamic there. Um, you know, I, I've been, it's just me and Roy. Um, you know, my father's happy that, that I found a coach that I've, I vibe with and that, you know, 
we 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 gel and we understand each other and um you know he's 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 behind it 100 percent um and you talk about wanting the the triple g fight and and, and you know that being the, the ultimate goal for you do you believe i read somewhere that you said that the 2021 is the year to do that do you believe that that's a fight that could possibly take place with fans uh here in the uk i mean that's the dream that's the goal you know, especially for British boxing fans to have that fight over here, um, whether that can be done, you know, that's that's up that's that's down to the promotion. Um, you know, obviously he fights a lot in the in the states, but you know, I would most definitely be campaigning to get that fight here in England for for the British fans. Thank you. Okay, Chris, really appreciate your time there. Um, we'll see you in the bubble later this week. Take care. Hey, listen. Um, if anyone didn't get to answer, ask a question, you know, I'm not doing anything right now. So, you know, if you want to do another five minutes, you can do that. If there's anyone that hasn't asked, got to ask a question, that's what I'm saying. Guys, if anyone hasn't had a chance to ask a question, if you either email myself or Chris from Salon, who's on the call, we'll try and sort out uh, a bit of time with Chris after this, okay? So just drop me an email. I'll pop it in the chat in the corner there, and then we'll try and get that sorted out tonight for you. Okay, thanks for appreciate it.